I don't know about you, but I can never remember in my lifetime having a Pope who spoke so often and so openly about how confession has changed his life, as does our, our current Pope Francis. He talks about how he had an experience of God's presence, of his love, his forgiveness, that has transformed him. He said, it was almost in a physical way that I experienced God's forgiveness descending down upon me. Let me give you the specifics. It happened on September 21st, 1953. That's significant because it's the Feast of St. Matthew. Remember the, the tax collector who was going the wrong way? Jesus said, follow me. And he left his money, left his tax post, and got up and followed Jesus. On September 21st, 1953, our Holy Father was 16 years old. He was in a church in Buenos Aires making a visit. A priest was there. He asked the priest if he could go to confession. The priest said, sure. He went to confession. And he said he experienced being washed in the mercy and love of God. And that experience changed him. It's still fresh in his mind today. He talks about it as if it happened yesterday. Recently, a reporter asked him, who is Pope Francis? He responded, I am a sinner whom the Lord has looked upon. He said, that is not a euphemism. It's not a pious image. It's really the truth. I am a sinner whom the Lord has looked upon. He points out that when Jesus called man through that text collector, the gospel at that point says, Jesus saw him and looked at him with love and said to him, follow me. He said, that's my story. That's everybody's story. Jesus sees us. And in his mercy, he looks at us with love. And he says, follow me. When he was elected as Pope, Pope Francis said to the cardinal electors, they were still in the Sistine Chapel, before he went out on the balcony, he said to them, I am a sinner, but I trust in the infinite mercy and patience of our Lord Jesus Christ. The Holy Father went on to say, the encounter with Christ, our meeting with Christ, the conversion to Christ, is the most essential thing in our life. And that conversion is, experience, is triggered by the experience of God's mercy. So in other words, we experience God's mercy, and then we say that's Jesus Christ. And then we convert. We encounter our Lord. He said only someone who's experienced the mercy of God, who has been caressed by the tenderness of God's mercy, is happy and comfortable with the Lord. Makes sense, doesn't it? When we realize Jesus Christ knows me totally. He knows my darkest secrets. He knows the things about me that I most don't like. He knows my most personal struggles with sin, evil. He knows all that. And he still loves me. When that is true, we're truly comfortable with that person, aren't we? He knows, if you will, all my dirty laundry. He knows everything about me. Still loves me. How can I not be comfortable with that person? That person is Jesus Christ, our Lord. He goes on to say, and this kind of connects with our gospel today, that if we are not rooted in that encounter with Jesus Christ, our efforts of prayer will never go beyond ourselves, like the Pharisee in the gospel. The gospel says, the Pharisee prayed to himself. And it's true, isn't it? If we haven't had that encounter with Christ, I'll be praying to me about me. I won't be speaking to that living person who's right there with me even as I pray. I think we will come in time to call Pope Francis the Pope of Mercy. That's what he's all about. He's had a powerful experience of God's mercy and has become a vessel of God's mercy for the church. I would even say for the world. He's bringing that mercy of Jesus Christ to our world. He says again and again, the most important thing is this. Jesus Christ has saved you. He has covered you with his mercy and love. Your encounter with him is the most essential thing in your life. More essential than what we own, what we do, 
who we are, the most essential thing is our encounter with Jesus Christ. That's going to go on forever. In fact, none of us will be in heaven without God's mercy. None of us are able to earn heaven. How will you and I be able to go to heaven at the end of our life? Because of the mercy of Jesus Christ. That means, of course, that you and I who are recipients of this incredible mercy are like our Holy Father to be vessels of it to one another. As we receive God's mercy and love, we need to pass it on. How can I not have received God's mercy and forgiveness for whatever the worst is that I have to offer and be merciless to someone, anyone in my life? It's not possible. It's a contradiction. The more I'm aware, Lord, I'm receiving your mercy right now, the more natural it will be for me to extend that mercy to anybody in my life who's offended me, who I don't like, who needs my mercy. B follows A. We identify when we hear this story not only with the tax collector, not the Pharisee. Because his prayer is our prayer. What does he do? He says he strikes his breast and says, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. How do we start this Mass? Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Striking our breasts, right along with the tax collector, and begging God's mercy on ourselves as well. The more we are aware of the mercy that we're constantly receiving every day, there's not a day that goes by that I'm not receiving God's mercy, the more we allow that experience to bring us to love Him, who is mercy in our life, the more we'll be able to pass it on to others. There's a great little story, maybe you've heard it, it's not new, about a famous preacher. He was to be the guest preacher at a church. When the time came for him to speak, he strode down the center aisle, up to the pulpit, full of confidence, his head held high. But when he got to the pulpit, every speaker's nightmare his sermon notes were not there. Very awkwardly, he winged it. He stumbled over his words, made very little sense, left the church quickly with his head down, humbled by the whole experience. One lady in the congregation turned to her neighbor and she said, if he had come in the way he went out, he could have gone out the way he came in. Jesus says, whoever exalts himself will be humble, and whoever humbles himself will be exalted. It's not just the Pope. Every one of us are daily recipients of God's great mercy in our regard. Once we receive his mercy, we're led to an incredible love and gratitude to our merciful Lord. And it follows that we then become vessels of God's mercy, not just our own, vessels of God's mercy to all those whom we need.